Right, here's some more of John Keats' letters to Fanny Braun. Um, this is an introduction I didn't write, uh, read this out before. Um, getting these from a uh, website www.englishhistory.net uh, forward slash Keats forward slash letters. Uh, Keats' letters to Fanny Braun are among the most famous love letters ever written. As next door neighbours, they exchange numerous short notes and occasionally more passionate ones. None of Fanny's letters to Keats survive. From his, however, it seems he was often unsettled by her behaviour and uncertain of her affections. His illness brought them closer. When he left for Rome, they were engaged and deeply in love. And uh, I'm not sure, but I think um, he was, she was his fiancée, um, but I, I think he died um, in 1820, which is when the last letter was written, because um, he had a very short life, so I don't think they ever got married. Anyway, this is, uh, uh, it's got a question mark next to this date, uh, the 10th of February, 1820. If illness makes such an agreeable variety in the manner of your eyes, I should wish you sometimes to be ill. I wish I had read your note before you went last night, that I might have assured you how far I was from suspecting any coldness. You had a just right to be a little silent to one who speaks so plainly to you. You must believe you shall, you will, that I can do nothing, say nothing, think nothing of you, but what has its spring in the love which has so long been my pleasure and torment. On the night I was taken ill, when so violently a rush of blood came to my lungs that I felt nearly suffocated, I assure you I thought it possible I might not survive, and at that moment thought of nothing but you. When I said to Brown, this is unfortunate, I thought of you. It is true that since the first two or three days other subjects have entered my head, I should be looking forward to health and the spring and a regular routine of our old walks. Your affectionate, J.K. February 1820 my sweet love, I shall wait patiently till tomorrow before I see you, and in the meantime, if there is any need of such a thing, assure you by your beauty, that whenever I have at any time written on a certain unpleasant subject, it has been with your welfare impressed upon my mind. How hurt I should have been had you ever acceded to what is notwithstanding very reasonable. How much the more do I love you from the general result. In my present state of health, I feel too much separated from you, and could almost speak to you in the words of Lorenzo's ghost Isabella. Your beauty grows upon me, and I feel a greater love through all my essence still. My greatest torment since I have known you has been the fear of you being a little inclined to the crescent, but that suspicion I dismiss utterly and remain happy in the surety of your love which I assure you is as much a wonder to me as a delight. Send me the words good night to put under my pillow. Dearest Fanny, yours affectionate, J.K. Uh, also from February, question mark here, 1820. My dearest girl, according to all appearances, I am to be separated from you as much as possible. How I shall be able to bear it, or whether it will not be worse than your presence now and then, I cannot tell. Must be patient, and in the meantime you must think of it as a little as possible. Let me not longer detain you from going to town. There may be no end of this imprisoning of you. Perhaps you had better not come before tomorrow evening. Send me, however, without fail a good night. You know our situation. What hope is there if I should be recovered ever so soon? My very health with for will not suffer me to make any great exertion. I am recommended not even to read poetry, much less write it. I wish I had even a little hope. I cannot say forget me, but I would mention that there are impossibilities in the world. No more of this. I am not strong enough to be weaned. Take no notice of it. Your good night. Happen what may I shall ever be, my dearest love. Your affectionate, J.K. 
also from February 1820. My dearest girl, how could it ever have been my wish to forget you? How could I have said such a thing? The utmost stretch my mind has been capable of was to endeavour to forget you for your own sake, seeing what a change, for chance, there was of my remaining in a precious state of health, precarious state of health. I would have borne it as I would bear death if fate was in the humour, but I should as soon think of choosing to die as to part from you. Believe too, my love, that our friends think and speak for the best, and if their best is not our best, it is not their fault. When I am better, I will speak with you at large on these subjects, if there is any occasion. I think there is none. I am rather nervous today, perhaps from being a little recovered and suffering my mind to take little exertions beyond the door and windows. I take it for a good sign, but it must not be encouraged you had better delay seeing me till tomorrow. Do not take the trouble of writing much. Merely send me my good night. Remember me to your mother and Margaret. Your affectionate J.K. Also from February 1820. I read your note in bed last night. I read your note in bed last night. And that might be the reason of my sleeping so much better. I think Mr. Brown is right in supposing you may stop too long with me. So very nervous I am. Send me every evening a written good night. If you come for a few minutes, about six, it may be the best time. If you come for... Uh, should you ever fancy me too low-spirited, I must warn you to ascribe, for ascribe, it to the medicine I am presently taking, which is of nerve-shaking nature. I should impute any depression I may experience to this cause. I have been writing with a vile old pen the whole week, which is excessively ungallant. The fault is in the quill. I have mended it, and said it is very much inclined to make blinds. However, these last lines are much better style of my penmanship that of, uh, for though a little disfigured by the smear of black currant jelly, which has made a little mark on one of the pages of Brown's Ben Johnson, the very best book he has. I've licked it, but it remains very pur for purple. I did not know whether to say purple or blue, so in the mixture of the thought wrote purple which may be an excellent name for a colour made up of those two, and would suit well to start next spring. Be very careful of open doors and windows and going out, going without your duffel grey. God bless you, love. J. Keats P.S. I am sitting in the back room. Remember me to your mother. And I'll continue more of those in a future uh, video on uh, YouTube.